Hi there, so in a previous video we looked at how we can make a Raspberry Pi tower using standoffs. And in the previous video, which I'll have a card to up here, we used standoffs that were 20 millimeters in height between the Raspberry Pis in order to make our Raspberry Pi tower. So in this video we'll see if we can get these Raspberry Pis packed even more densely in a Raspberry Pi tower that has a higher density. Let's get right into it. The trick to figuring out how we can get a denser Raspberry Pi tower is to notice one thing. Previously we were stacking the Raspberry Pis in our orientation like this. You'll notice in this situation that the USB ports and the Ethernet ports are going to bump into each other because that's the parts that have the highest height. Now, if we try to make those ports not be right next to each other, for example, by putting it in this kind of orientation, you'll notice that we probably could get a higher density arrangement of Raspberry Pis if we go like this. So let's go ahead and try to get some standoffs and connect the Raspberry Pi together in this configuration. All right, so I've gone ahead and attached 18 millimeter spacers on top of the first layer of the Raspberry Pi. So on top of here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the second layer of Raspberry Pi in in this direction, like so. Now we need to make a choice about the length of the standoff that we put on next. So depending on whether you want to put the Raspberry Pi in in this direction or this direction, the length of the spacer that we'll need between these two Raspberry Pis will differ. I'm going to opt to put the third layer in in this direction for reasons I'll show you in a moment. So I checked ahead of time of the length of spacer that I should have between the second and third layer of the Raspberry Pi. I figured that about eight millimeters was the right size to use. Okay, so we got the 8mm standoff on top of the second layer of the Raspberry Pi. So we'll see how it will look if we put that third layer right there. And the reason why I had 8mm spacers between the second and third layer of the Raspberry Pis was so that I can have access to the SD card of the second layer right here. If I were to put this third layer upside down such that the Ethernet port and USB ports pointing in this direction, I wouldn't have access to the SD card of the second layer anymore. So I figured that this would be a pretty good configuration for how to lay out the Raspberry Pis. Okay, at this point I'm going to add another layer of Raspberry Pi on top so we can get four Raspberry Pis in one tower. With this configuration we'll be able to compare this Raspberry Pi tower with the Raspberry Pi tower we made previously using 20 millimeter standoffs between each layer. What we have so far, we only have a 18 millimeter spacer, eight millimeter spacer, and 18 millimeter spacer here for a total of 44 millimeters. So this Raspberry Pi tower is quite a bit denser compared to the previous one, which needed 60 millimeters of spacers. So let's go ahead and actually add the next layer and see how it'll look. So we'll go ahead and put the fourth layer on top in the same orientation as we have the second layer, like so. By the way, this happens to be Raspberry Pi 3 while the other ones are Raspberry Pi 2s. For the final standoffs that we're going to put on, the length doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to go ahead and use some 10 millimeter spacers that I had handy with me just right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. So here we go, we have our high density Raspberry Pi tower. So the first thing I can say about this Raspberry Pi tower is that it's quite a bit denser than the previous Raspberry Pi tower that I assembled. As you can see, the lengths of the spacers are much shorter, and even looking from the side, the boards are much closer together. So there's a couple of good things and bad things about this arrangement. So the HDMI ports are all on one side, just like in the previous tower, and the USB ports are staggered, but they're still facing on the same side. Looking at the size of the Raspberry Pi, we can see that the Ethernet ports and the USB ports are right next to each other on each of the sides. Now there is one downside if we look at this side. For the GPIO ports, it's obviously inaccessible. It's going to be very difficult to put in any kind of 
cabling to these GPIO ports. Also, you can see that the pins are very, very closely arranged, so that might be a little bit on the scary side. If you're worried about that, you may want to use a little bit longer standoffs here. Right now, this is 18 millimeters, but maybe 20, 25, something a little bit longer might be a little less worrisome. So I think we've fulfilled the goal of trying to make a denser Raspberry Pi tower. If you were to make a Raspberry Pi cluster out of this, one of the things you may have to consider is how to cool the Raspberry Pis. In this configuration, the cooling would probably be most effective if we can get the air going through this direction, because the CPUs are going to be located around here. We also could blow air in this direction, but the Ethernet ports and USB ports are probably going to get in the way of providing effective cooling, so probably this direction would be more ideal for getting air through to cool the Raspberry Pis. So as with the previous video, we're using metal standoffs to assemble this Raspberry Pi tower. Be sure that you don't have any metal filings or any loose shavings of the metal spacer that might have gotten on the Raspberry Pi so that they don't end up shorting any components on the board. Also be sure that none of the standoffs are too close to any energized electric components, any pins and such, so that we don't end up conducting electricity and end up breaking our Raspberry Pi. So just keep that in mind when you assemble this for yourself. So if you found this video informative, I would appreciate it if you can give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.